guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do like a factory shootout kind of an episode. I've got three good rounds I'm going to shoot off that I've been wanting to test. The Terminal Ascent from Federal, the Burger Hybrid Hunter, it's loaded by Federal, and then the Norma Bond Strike. And I'm going to shoot these in my 308. And I'm also going to start out with some PowerPoints, just some old Winchester PowerPoints that I had because my barrel's clean and I'm going to get it good and fouled. But while we're at it, we might as well test out the PowerPoints, kind of throw them in as a bonus. But it's mainly those first three. And so let's get out to the range. So after the five shot groups to see what the velocities were going to be and to see how good the groups were, I then shot another three shot group with all three. This time I took my time a little more, made the best shot I could with that 6X scope. You know, you just kind of get the point aimed where you want it and you just squeeze. And, but I took a little bit more time, try to make as, everything as consistent as possible. So let's see how these groups look. Not too bad. Okay, that is the Norma Bond strike. So two touching each other, and then one about an inch off. That's probably inch and a half, maybe inch and a quarter. Here is the Federal Terminal Ascent. That's about a little under an inch, maybe an inch. I'll measure with the calipers, but that's pretty darn good. Here's the Federal Ammunition with the Burgers a hybrid bullet. So once again, inch, inch and a quarter, not bad at all. All right, just for a recap, the PowerPoint, one shot over here off the paper, two, three, four, had a really bad flyer. So a 3.3 inch five shot group at 100 yards. Wasn't for the flyer, it wouldn't be terrible, but that happened. Okay. Normal bond strike, a five shot 1.339 or 1.34 inch group, not bad for a five inch group. Flyer kind of jacked it up. Terminal ascent, 1.793. Once again, flyer really messed it up. There's two right there touching. And then the burger hybrid, 1.336. Basically almost identical to the bond strike. Um, and same story, a flyer kind of screwed it up, but. All in all, for a five-shot group, not terrible. Now, these three-shot groups, I actually shot them for accuracy purposes. I wanted to see how tight of a group I could get. The other one I shot a little quicker, really focused more on muzzle velocity. So here's the Bond Strike, 1.176 inch. You see, of course, two is touching, got a flyer. 1.2, it's a little over a minute of angle, not terrible. I had a pretty dang good group here. The terminal ascent was 0.894, so just a little under minute of angle, and that would be the best group at 100 yards. And then the burger hybrid, paper kind of tore there, but there's one, two, three, and it's 1.023. So at 100 yards, doing my very best, burger hybrid was about one MOA, bond strike just a hair over, terminal ascent was a hair under. If you take away that fly that flyer, that's a good four shot group. So overall, I'm gonna give the accuracy win to the terminal ascent, even though this flyer kind of messed it up. But you take that away, it's easily got the best four shot group, and it did have the best three shot group. So most accurate load goes to the terminal ascent. All right, now before you comment, I fully understand this is not a scientific test. In reality, this is only 
kind of seeing if my particular gun likes these factory ammo offerings. And really you're only comparing these lots. You know, if you, it's possible you get a different lot, the quality control might not be there. So this test might not be applicable to anyone else, but it's good information nonetheless. So let's do a little deeper dive into some of the numbers. All right, so that PowerPoint had a 2908 velocity, but that's with a 150 grain bullet. So kind of what what's expected. An extreme spread of 37 and a standard deviation of 13.5. Not the worst thing ever, but definitely the worst of all these that we shot today. The Bond Strike had an average muzzle velocity of 2550 with an extreme spread of 23 and an SD of 10.4. Now that's the best of the day. Best extreme spread, best standard deviation. Don't freak out about the muzzle velocity. That's a 180 grain bullet. It's definitely gonna go a lot slower. Terminal Ascent had almost exactly the same average muzzle velocity, 2549, yet it had a 175 grain bullet. So in reality, I think it should have shot a little bit faster. And by the way, all these rounds shot basically 50 feet per second slower than what the box said that they would. But the terminal ascent had an extreme spread of 26 and an SD of 11.4. Definitely better than the PowerPoint, slightly worse than the Bond Strike. Burgard Hybrid Hunter, average muzzle velocity of 26.63. Now that's with 168 grain bullet. Extreme spread of 27 and an SD of 12. So it's slightly, Worse than the terminal ascent, um, but very, very close. And But the bond strike, as far as extreme spread and SD, the bond strike definitely wins. As you can see, all the way out to 400 yards, they all have close to 2,000 feet per second and 1,500 foot-pounds of energy. A couple of them are slightly under that. The bond strike has the best at 400 simply because it has the best BC. It has a much higher BC. I understand it's a heavier bullet, 180 compared to 175 and 168, which that definitely helps, but it must be also the shape of the bullet because that's a much higher BC. It's 615 versus 520 with the terminal ascent versus I believe 485, it's, it's on the screen there, 485 for the um, hybrid hunter. Now, once again, at the 400 yards, 2000 feet per second, 1500 foot pounds of energy, it's gonna be enough. Of the three, the Bond Strike would be the best. Simply because it has the best BC, it's just gonna retain a little bit better. Of the three though, honestly, they all do pretty darn good. And of course, today we're not talking about terminal performance, which that's another video, but today it's more just ballistics. So retaining its energy, retaining its velocity at one, two, and then 400 yards, I would give the edge to the bond strike. That's pretty much expected though. You have a heavier bullet, it's gonna start out with more energy and then it, since it has a higher BC, it's just gonna retain its energy and velocity more. So it's really nothing to, it's, it's really nothing unexpected. It's, it's pretty much what you would expect. So I will say that I shot uh, about 32 rounds today from the PowerPoints to the other three and it, my gun did not kick that bad on any of them. The 308, in my opinion, just does not kick that much. So I never noticed a difference in which one I was shooting. Whether it was the 180 or the 150, I just never noticed one significantly kicked more than the other. Now, it obviously did. The 180 did have more recoil than the 150 or the 168 or the 175 even. Without question, it had more recoil. But there was never a time where I felt a difference, where I felt like, Man, that definitely kicked worse. I just didn't. Now, in my experience, I, I have shot 180 grain 30 out six rounds versus 150 grain 30 out six rounds, and I felt a noticeable difference. But for whatever reason, I just didn't today. They all felt about the same, and recoil was not a factor. All right, so of these, which one would I pick as the winner? All right, so you see the terminal ascent on the left, the normal bond strike in the middle, and the burgers on the right. 
I'll just be honest with you, I think all three of these are fantastic cartridges. Now, being 168, 175, and 180 grains, this would be for an elk. Here in Missouri, I the 308's my main cartridge that I use for white-tailed deer. I'm gonna typically use 150 or even 130 grain, like a monolithic bullet. 150 grain, just standard cup and core. You just don't need this big of a bullet. If you're shooting at elk, and you think your, you know, your distance is going to be between three and four hundred yards. I think all three of these would be great. If you read, I mean, obviously elk, elk, elk. These are designed for elk hunting with a 308 long range, and it's, it's just basically these are designed as long range elk hunting cartridges, or ammo, I should say. Once again, I'm talking three to four hundred yards. If you get, you know, 500 yards, you really probably should get a totally different cartridge. 30-06 or bigger, probably more like a 300 wind mag, at least, to have enough energy on target to do the job. Could it do the job? Of course. But now, if you do plan on hunting elk out west and you do plan on using a 308 and you think I could have three to 400 yard shots, I think all three of these would be good. Now, long range Acubond, Another good choice. I thought about buying those for this test as well, but they're just so much more expensive than these other ones. Hornady uh, ELDX would, would be another one I'd like to test, but I just feel like I've, I've shot the ELDX quite a bit on this channel, so I wanted to do something different. Now, and these two on the left, this Terminal Ascent and this Bond Strike are pretty new, especially the Bond Strike. You can pretty much only get it in 30 caliber at the moment, the Terminal Ascent, you can get it in several things, but nothing like an Acubon. It's, it doesn't have the track record. It's not been around as long as the Acubon. A few years ago, I would have said this Burger Hybrid Hunter, Burger VLD, Hornady ELDX, that would have been the kind of bullet I think would be best at longer range hunting. I know it's cup and core. I know it's possibly gonna fragment. It's just, it's much softer and it's gonna potentially have better terminal performance at longer ranges. And also they just have really high BCs and they seem very accurate. So I just have always kind of leaned toward Burgers and Hornady ELDXs as the go-to for long range. However, I'm starting to think, man, I don't know that you need that because, so I haven't shot these in water yet and I do plan on doing that to kind of see how the bullet expands. But typically speaking, a bonded bullet is just going to be way more consistent on the way it expands and penetrates than say a cup and core bullet. It's just, it just is what it is. The monolithic bullets are fantastic as well, but they need a lot of velocity. So out to three, 400 yards, it's not the best, but this terminal ascent, the back half of the bullet is monolithic and the front half is a bonded bullet, which seems in all the testing I've seen, very consistent at expansion and penetration. And this Norma Bond Strike is just very similar to an Acubond Long Range, but I think it has even a higher BC. I could be wrong about that, but it's definitely softer. It's, it's similar to the Acubond Long Range, but really soft. It tends to have the same consistent expansion and penetration. And both of these bullets, this Terminal Ascent and this Bond Strike, have very high BCs, right up there with like the Burgers and the ELDX. So even though I think the Burgers and the ELDX are great long range hunting bullets, I think they've been replaced. I think this, this new bonded bullet that is high BC and just seems to ex um, be consistent at any range is really the way to go. So if you pick the Burgers, I wouldn't, be upset with you, but I would pick one of these two for sure. The Terminal Ascent or the Bond Strike. Which one would I pick? Now, you can't go wrong, but with that really high BC, and even though it was five grains heavier, it still got the same muzzle velocity. I just feel like that Norma Bond Strike is like the ultimate long range hunting bullet. So I'm really impressed with that. And if I had to give it a winner, it would be that one right there. But that terminal ascent seems just, 
really good. If if the Bond Strike got 10 out of 10, the Terminal Ascent got like 9.5 out of 10, and the Burgers are good seven or eight. So any one of these bullets would do great. If I had, if you made me pick one, I would definitely go by a small margin with the normal Bond Strike. Hope you've enjoyed this video. More things like this to come. If you would like me to do more expansive tests in ballistics gel and a lot more cartridges and a lot different ranges, uh, I have a Patreon <laughs> that you can help donate, kind of the bullet fund, but there's no obligations whatsoever. And if you don't want to do that, please don't. But I do have a Patreon in the link below as well as Twitter and Instagram and a few other things. So please check out the description below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. More videos like this coming out. And I'll just leave it there. And until next time, have a great day.